It started as a relaxing yoga retreat, but quickly spiraled into a family's worst nightmare when an American woman vanishes while visiting Guatemala. Now, a desperate international search is underway to find her safe. I'm concerned that it's been, what, about three weeks um, at this point, and there hasn't been any developments or any leads in it. Back in October, 29-year-old Nancy Ng left her home in California to visit Guatemala. She'd attended a yoga retreat there the year before and was excited to participate again. She left the States on October 14th, heading for Lake Atilan, a massive body of water in a volcanic crater located in the southwest part of the country. It was just days later, on October 19th, when she was last seen kayaking into the lake. To understand what will go into the international investigation, we sat down with former CIA officer and FBI agent Tracy Walder. She says multiple departments are involved in the search for Ng. This is going to be a, a multi-pronged investigation. However, the Guatemalan authorities, by international law, will take the lead because it happened in their jurisdiction. However, because it's an American citizen, the FBI is already involved. Um, and then the State Department uh, is probably liaising with the American Embassy in Guatemala as well as sort of a representative of her. Back home, Ng lives in Monterey Park, California, and works at a nearby school district, assisting students with disabilities. Her family says they received a call from the yoga retreat organizer just days after their daughter arrived, noting Ng had disappeared. Her family then got in touch with the FBI and State Department, something Walder says is the best first step. Let's say that this happens to you. You're back home in the States, your family member's traveling, and then they disappear. What are the steps that you take to start an investigation at all? So obviously the first thing that you're going to do, because you're here in the States, so I'm just going to look at it from a state perspective, because obviously there's two different avenues here. From a state perspective, the first thing you would probably want to do is actually call the FBI, um, because the FBI is going to be the law enforcement point person for any international um, investigation. So she's from California. Um, and so, yes, I think one might be inclined to notify like their local or their state police, and that's all fine. But I do think the first call should be to whatever your local FBI office is. I think based on where she's from, it's probably the LA field office, but I'm not certain. Um, they are the people then that is go that are going to liaise with the Guatemalan authorities on your behalf. And so the very first call should be to the FBI. The second call should probably be to the Department of State. Um, and then they will put you in contact with the embassy and you would provide all of the traveler's information uh, to the embassy. You said the Guatemalan government is gonna be leading this investigation. So what would that investigation look like with the assistance or liaison of the FBI? So it's a little bit different because when we look at like Idaho, for example, and I want to kind of juxtapose it with this, with Idaho, um, obviously you have the Moscow PD is the point of that investigation. Idaho State Police is helping them, the FBI is helping them, but they're brought in as guests, right? And they only help as much as Moscow is asking them to help. This is different. Um, and the FBI is probably going to be working side by side uh, with the local Guatemalan authorities because uh, Guatemala wouldn't technically have jurisdiction over her, the FBI would. And so at that point, they're not a invited guest like it is here locally with some of the crimes that I know we've discussed before. This is a case where the FBI has to get involved per international law, is compelled to get involved and working, be working side by side. Typically, I don't usually hear um, about international jurisdictions not being okay with that. It's really just kind of standard protocol um, and how things are done. When you have a foreign national, it would work conversely here that same way in the United States. Walder says there may be FBI agents already located in Guatemala, but more have likely been brought in from the U.S. to assist in the search. What Guatemala has, they may have a legal attache already there because of their proximity to our border. Um, and some of the other border issues that I know we're dealing with in, in like Central and South America, we may already have one there. So if that's the case, that person would be working with them. But we have to remember the FBI is a domestic organization. And so this wouldn't be an FBI office full of two dozen agents, right? This would be an FBI office of maybe one, 
maybe two on a good day. And so they would be bringing in um, FBI agents to probably assist. Authorities in Guatemala say Ng was last seen kayaking with a group of tourists before she and another person broke off from the group. After paddling for about a mile, Ng reportedly jumped in and began swimming. After that, she disappeared. Multiple reports cite witnesses who last saw Ng in Guatemala have not been forthcoming with investigators. Is that normal for these people not to be cooperative? In my opinion, no. Um, that would be my first, I guess, red flag. <laughs> um, you know, when I was a special agent, people not being cooperative, subversive to the point that they want to go back to the States, um, to me is, is a red flag. Now, look, obviously people's behavior, we can't predict what it's going to do in an emergency type of situation. So maybe they're just making poor choices. I don't know. Um, but the fact that they're being subversive and they're not being forthcoming, in my opinion, is disconcerting because it sounds like this was just a yoga retreat, nothing necessarily nefarious going on. And maybe there were, were nefarious things going on that had nothing to do with her. I don't know. Um, but either way, I would think that it sounds like this was her second one, perhaps with the same organization. So these are probably people that she knows maybe. Um, and I don't understand why they wouldn't be more forthcoming. Even I get wanting an attorney uh, when you speak to law enforcement, but if this is simply a missing person situation, I'm not sure why they would want to lawyer up that quickly. At this point, it's still unclear what exactly led up to Ng's disappearance. Walder says it could change into a criminal investigation, but it would depend on the facts experts collect. There's not necessarily a pinpoint in the investigation with that would happen. Once they've gone through all of her digital records or even looked at where she was staying, like kind of gone through that physical area and coupled with the fact that witnesses are not being forthcoming, they may declare this as some kind of a criminal investigation, which means that will definitely change the scope of it. But sometimes that can take weeks or months, um, depending on how long it takes to go through everything, particularly when you're dealing with um, a foreign country. And what this really boils down to, even though she is in Guatemala, she's still a missing person. I mean, that's the main part of this investigation. So what are the first steps that investigators, both Guatemalan and American FBI agents, what are they doing to kind of track her down? So probably two things. Obviously, any digital devices that she left behind have probably been seized. My guess is they also got, um, you know, digital warrants or digital subpoenas to whatever her carrier was. Um, I don't know what it was, but I'm sure that they're trying to look at those text messages or any interesting phone numbers that she may have called social media, all of that digital stuff they're obviously doing. But on the other side, they're probably were interviewing witnesses, but it's my understanding that witnesses have not been cooperative and that they're all back here in the States, which is disturbing. A GoFundMe page has already raised nearly $50,000 to assist in the search for Ng. According to the page, the money is going toward helicopter search and rescue teams, divers, boat rescue teams, and potentially even submarine or sonar equipment. Walter says all this and the private search team the family has hired could be beneficial. You know, families that have the means, there, there's nothing wrong um, to be said about, you know, hiring another layer. Um, of people to investigate. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It sounds like they have the means to do that. Um, it is going to become complicated though, because I'm not certain the laws in Guatemala uh, governing private investigators and what they're allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do. Here in the US, it's defined. Um, but I don't know about Guatemala unless they hired someone in Guatemala um, to help them. And if that's the case, then you know, they would, of course, adhere to whatever Guatemalan laws were. As the clock ticks on, Walder says the search for Ng will become more difficult, but it's not hopeless. I want to obviously be respectful to her family um, and to her friends and to all of the people that loved her. Um, however, I'm concerned that it's been, what, about three weeks um, at this point, and there hasn't been any developments or any leads in it, you know, as time gets further and further and further away. Uh, the chance of someone being found safe um, isn't as high, but I just I want to remain you know sensitive to her 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 family and her friends. Walter also suggests taking precautions when traveling to another country, like giving your family back home updates and downloading safety apps onto your phone.
The first thing is there is obviously the State Department app that you can put in your phone that tells you all the warnings through all the countries. But there is also an app um, that will, what it does is with a touch of a button on your phone, it will call the 911 equivalent in that country. Because no matter what country we're in, we don't know what their 911 um, system is. It's not 911. And so I think that's sort of a key uh, thing as well. Also, there's apps where you can overseas for free share your geolocation with six people that you've already put into your phone. Um, and so I think something like that would be very helpful. You know, for example, if she had programmed her parents or her friends, they would know the last known geolocation of her phone, which would cut off a lot of time in terms of people trying to find that last location. So those are just kind of discrete apps, obviously, that you can have. Now, she was at a yoga retreat. It doesn't sound like she was at a hotel. So that might be a, a different situation in terms of security and how you would secure yourself. But I would absolutely start um, with, with those kind of tracking apps if you're traveling overseas by yourself. But we all travel with our phone um, that you can put and have on your phone and it gives you just like an extra layer of security. I mean, is something gonna happen? Most likely not. Those stats are not in our favor, which is a good thing. Um, but you never know. And so I think it's always just best to have the apps on there and if you need it, in there. To donate to the GoFundMe page supporting Ng's search and rescue, click on the link in the description. Reporting for Long Crime Network, I'm Sierra Gillespie.